In this video, we will investigate how we can summarize an inequality's graph in interval notation. Interval notation is used, as I said earlier, to summarize a graph with key numbers. The way we summarize the graph with key numbers is we put in some type of parentheses, the low number first, comma, the high number. Interval notation will always be read from left to right, low, comma, high. Depending on the type of inequality, the parentheses might be slightly different. We use curve parentheses for less than or greater than, and we use square parentheses when the inequality is greater than or equal to, or less than and equal to. Sometimes, we will use infinity or negative infinity in our inequality. In this case, we will always use curved parentheses, as you can never be exactly equal to infinity. Let's take a look at some examples where we find interval notation. In this example, we have a graph that starts at negative 2 and goes off forever on the end. Because it goes off forever on the end, we'll assume that goes up to infinity. Negative 2, then, is the low number. Infinity is the high number. Because there is a closed dot at negative 2, this means we are equal to negative 2, and we will use a square parentheses to reflect that. On the other side, infinity always gets a curved parentheses. Let's consider another example. In this problem, we are given an interval from negative infinity to negative 1. This means the graph is stopping at negative 1. Notice the curved parentheses. This means we're not exactly equal to negative 1. We recall from graphing inequalities that we use an open dot when we're not exactly equal to the number. Negative infinity is the other side, showing the graph is going off the left side. Coloring in our shade gives us the graph that matches the interval negative infinity to negative 1. The advantage of interval notation is it can summarize a graph in a much more compact space using key numbers.